Broadway. <laughs> you feel me? Edgewood, Auburn Avenue, Fourth Ward. Don't think it's no thumb. It's always been kind of a close knit area. Um, I remember just like any kind of small businesses or anything over there, like you kind of knew everybody that worked there. Like my mom's best friend, like owned a hair salon, like right around the corner. Mm. And like, like she knew like people around. Uh, the curb market was the spot. I'm gonna say that. I mean, like you're right around the corner from Auburn Fest. I mean, from like from Auburn Street. Uh, you're right around the corner from MLK. So there's this culture in general. So everyone around there's really, in tune with the atmosphere. Don't need no switchblade or no fucking Uzi. This ain't no soap opera or a fucking movie. How would I start the community now? Yeah. It's a Gucci. Yeah. And if you don't know what Gucci means, yeah. look it up. Gucci being is outstanding. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? The community is much better now. I'm glad it, I'm glad it integrated. You understand what I'm saying? So everybody can walk around here and enjoy themselves. All the way up the boulevard, all the way down to Auburn. Everybody gotta have somewhere to come. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Not one spot need to be for one person only. That's what Martin Luther King fought for. Into motherfucking grace. That's why you got the King Center over there. All this shit is integrated. And that's number love. That's why y'all out here. I was always taught to treat people like you want to be treated. You understand what I'm saying? Right. You feel me? That's what we do in the folk. It's fourth war. I love the folk. I motherfucking love the folk. Four fingers, no thumb. I've been here for 28 years, and it ain't showed me number love. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You feel me? Yeah. And it's love. Cause we barbecue right here. You know what I'm saying? We cook fish. We show love. That's what we do. And see, I'm from Florida. I grew up in Cleveland. My mama brought me down here to Atlanta when I was like, in my 20s. And I've been down here ever since. But I'm gonna tell y'all some real shit. Right. I was out here real fucked up. Real fucked up. You know what my mama told me? <laughs> my mama said, I, I gotta let you go. I can't do nothing else for you. Rest the shoulders off. Sick me out there to the woods. But you know what though? I got her DNA and I got my daddy DNA. Which makes me a G. I love the folk. The folk been good to me. But I can go anywhere and survive. That, that, that's, that's just what you, that's what a man's supposed to do. That's what a man do, man. Survive. That's what a man do. Just like you, ain't you surviving? You're doing your thing. You're being a man about this shit. You feel me? Everybody need a hand sometimes. And don't be ashamed to take a hand. You feel me? That's what God put people in your lives for, to help us. You feel me? That's what, man. I worked on the back of a garbage truck and one day they were backing up while I was on the back and they backed me into a dump truck and crushed my pelvis. That injury put me in a wheelchair. The only thing connecting the top and bottom was the spinal cord. So I have a bar here that connects my legs. So once I healed, I took that same wheelchair, I put a cool in it, I put snacks in it and I started walking around selling snacks. I gave myself the name Big Mouth Ben because I was advertising. Yes. So I said, Big Mouth Ben, if you want to sell it, let me tell it. And so people would put their flyers on my wheelchair yes. while I walked around town and sold my snacks. So I would eventually upgrade to a bicycle. 
uh, but I struggle with addiction. Yeah. addiction and mental illness. So a lot of my years on Auburn Avenue, unfortunately, was spent uh, in active addiction. I, um, I, you know, as I, first I, after I overcame the injury, you know, I began to sell my snacks out of a wheelchair and I relapsed and, and uh, later I would be walking around selling snacks to support my habit. And also when I designed the bike, but eventually, I would have a spiritual awakening under the bridge. And, and, and in my uh, life, that was a conversation with God. And I said, it had to be more to life than this. And uh, God answered back. He told me it is. He promised to love me wherever I wanted to be. And um, so I realized it was up to me. I realized it was up to the choices I was making. And uh, a, a few more years later, I was reunited with my college sweetheart, who's inside the store now, uh, running the store. We were college sweethearts at the University of Georgia, University of Georgia. Um, I share in schools a lot that I graduated on a roll student and went to the University of Georgia and still ended up under that bridge. Um, choices. So, uh, you know, I started moving forward and I was riding around on the bike and there was a police sign in the window. Actually, it was on the end down here, 376. Looked through the window and had this vision. I saw coolers on the right and shells on the left and the counter in the middle. And so we ended up opening a business two blocks from where I used to sleep. Uh, struggling with addiction. Right. So uh, it's just a story of never giving up. Uh, the community has changed. Um, some good, some bad. You know, a lot of people are losing out um, with what they call gentrification. Uh, but uh, a positive side is that the community is looking better. You know, so there's a, you know, I wish I could find true balance in that. But, you know, um, so what we do for the community is it's still an outreach. The store helps. We keep clothes in the car for people that may need clothes. And um, we also have a nonprofit that partners with other nonprofits and we help people to get help that they need. I was in the wheelchair uh, going by five points one time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a lady sold newspapers. And I'm, you know, hello, ma'am. I used to call her Sunshine. Never knew her name for the six months. And I used to say, good morning, Sunshine. Have a blessed day. I had my surgery, came back about three months later. Ma'am, you know, she said, hey, I'm going to kill you. I said, I ain't done nothing. I'm not drinking today. She said, no. She said, yeah, sir, I, uh, you came by one day and said, have a blessed day. And I was going to use. And I hadn't used in years. And I didn't use because of you saying that. And I just want to hug you and tell you thank you. Right. Reaching out to somebody saying, have a blessed day, you never know. Have make somebody feel regardless how you feel. Sure, I made the bike yellow to represent the sunshine. My goal, I found it my calling and my goal is to brighten people's life. So uh, we put yellow duct tape on the bike to represent the sunshine. What makes me happy? Yeah. Waking up every day and being able to do something for the kids. I don't do as much as I should, but I try. And what makes me happy is I can get up and get work and be motivated and help other people. See what I'm saying? People bless me, so guess what? I bless other people. And I think we, what's the happiness in this neighborhood is, is the, the family. You know, we all have something in common, whether it be the struggle, <laughs> you know, or, um, or we share the same dream. Whatever it may be, we find a common ground and we just find something in common and we relate to it and we just kind of look out for each other. You know, that's more than anything. You can get money, it's gone tomorrow, you know, today, regardless of what they do, eat or whatever else. But tell somebody have a blessed day and the God. Oh, shit. Who them boys that be having a crunk every occasion? This side niggas dusting, that side niggas lacing. But in the Middle East, they calm, we just drop bombs. Asking where we come from, South Coast Long. Just two dope boys in a Cadillac.